Hey y'all, welcome back to the Spirit of the Outdoors. Last time when we picked some chanterelle mushrooms and then we picked some chicken of the woods, we got really scolded for not cooking the chicken of the woods. Everybody wanted to see how we cooked it. So today, that's what I'm fixing to do is we're gonna cook both. I've got some chanterelles in a bag that we picked out here in the woods and I've just had them in my refrigerator. Now these have been in there for almost a week so uh and they're still in good shape they're in a ziploc bag and this is the chicken of the woods and i had already cut it up if you want to see what it looked like you go back to my other video and i may put a link to it in the descriptions but this is a chicken of the woods it's fairly cut up into decent pieces but now we're gonna get it out and uh i'm gonna show you a little bit about how i'm cooking it now i've just got some oil over here in my cast iron skillet warming up we're gonna deep fry this i'm gonna batter it uh, and the other skillet, I'm going to warm it up. We're going to cook the chanterelles and butter in it. So what I'm going to do to begin with is we're going to clean these up. Uh, normally you would cut these when you pick them, but me and my little boy picked them and some of them just got pulled up. Now look how big this chanterelle is. That's beside my hand. That's, that's a very large chanterelle mushroom. But what I, all I've got to do, they've been somewhat washed. We're going to probably rinse them off again. I like to say rinse them off. But I'm going to take a knife and cut these stems off. Just where they got some dirt down there. It's easier just to do away with that than it is to try to wash it. I'm going to get a strainer where we can just wash them through here. Rewash this. One. Go ahead and turn my other skillet. I'm going to turn it a little below medium. And we're going to put the butter in there and get it started melting. I may add some more to it, so I'm gonna leave that right there. Now we're just gonna cut these chanterelles up. Uh, and however you wanna cut them, it's purely up to you. Saute them like this, they're gonna cook down pretty good anyway. We're gonna hurry up and get through. You've seen me cook chanterelles before. We cooked them on the Blackstone, so. I just cut these up any which way just to get them into smaller pieces. I believe that's probably the biggest chanterelle that I have ever picked. Kind of why I wanted to add it into this video. Okay. Now we've got them like that. 
just gonna empty that bag on out there. Now we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna take that bag and we're gonna put flour in it for these. Let me dump these. I'm gonna rinse. I'm, and this has been washed one time. I know this one has when I cut it up, but we're gonna wash it again just to be sure. If I wouldn't film, and I probably wouldn't, but I don't want y'all to scold me. put some flour in this bag right here. And this is going to be for the chicken of the woods. Now what I do to add my salt, that's about a tablespoon. I said about. And then the pepper, I put it on the sprinkler and I just kind of, by what I can see. Now all I'm going to use for this seasoning this is salt and pepper. It's chicken of the woods. Now this is kind of how chicken is fried in the southeastern part of the United States. But this is a, a batter and fry method, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bowl and we're going to put some milk in there. Okay, I'm going to put some milk in here. Now our butter is... Let me find... Pretty wood one. That's pretty well coated with butter and melted. And that's what we're gonna do here. And we're gonna let them slow cook. I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. Okay, we're gonna get this over here. And what we're gonna do these big pieces, I'm gonna start cutting them up a little smaller then the square is about like that you don't want it too small because you're deep frying it so the larger pieces are kind of what you're going for and about like that is about right so I'm just putting that in there and some of this from where I cut it up the last time what I cooked. Okay, once that's in that milk, it's good and wet, what we do is then you take it and drop it in your flour. And I do it in a Ziploc bag. Sometimes you put it in a bowl and you mix it with your fingers. I just wind up with it all over my fingers that way. And see, it's coated good then. And that needs to get a little bit warmer. We're going to wait just a little bit.
back up just a little bit. Looks like we're going to be all right on the butter. We'll go ahead and put it in the milk back up. We're gonna cover this pretty powder up with a paper towel. Help soak up that grease. Now this deep frying that we do here, you just kind of watching them and letting them turn this. These are really light, so they're gonna float right off the stock start with meat usually once it starts floating good or french fries they're done this is a little bit different because they're going to float to the beginning so sort of like a hush puppy you kind of just watching the color of it if y'all are familiar with hush puppy get the rest of this on down in the milk Letting it soak in that milk just a little bit. It just helps the flavor with it, I guess. This is kind of the way that we do everything in the south. You deep fry it. But I'm sure there's many other methods of cooking this. This is simply just the way that I cook this. So take that for what it's worth. See me getting this milk all over everywhere. Get it on my fingers. Alright. What you do now, they starting to brown just a little bit. Just kind of roll them over where that heat gets to the other side. And you just kind of watch the color till they turn. Uh, it don't take really long to cook these. And I've got this grease relatively low. It's not really hot. Uh, a lot of times if I'm cooking fish or something, I want that grease pushing 300 degrees. And this is not quite that hot. It's not even more near that hot, I don't think. We're probably around 200, 250. Just enough to get it frying. Alright, now these we just about cooked all the liquid out to where they're kind of brown in the edges and that's what you want to look for in this. Uh, you don't want to take them out floating in juice. You want to cook that juice on out of the skillet 
and kind of start caramelizing the edges of this cut up pieces. Or that's the way I prefer to do it. Let them cook for just a second more. We're going to watch this. This has been long enough. We're gonna cut this side off. And you see how them's kind of browned on the edges. Now we strictly just cooking mushrooms tonight. I didn't I didn't attempt to do a full meal. We've got some uh, broccoli soup in this pot over here. We my wife cooked, so we really already had a meal. I'm just kind of doing this for the sake of doing it. Plus, I'd had the mushrooms in the refrigerator going on a week, so and they were fine. There's nothing wrong with them that long in the refrigerator. They were sealed up, airtight. They're good, but uh, I didn't want to keep them an overly long amount of time. So now this is see how this is starting to get still. They're brown and good. We're fixing to take these out. It looks like the crust on fried chicken, the way we cook it down south. So y'all keep that in mind. This is southern fried chicken of the woods. And not Kentucky fried. This is Mississippi fried. We'll let them cool a little bit before we taste test any of this. I do most of my deep frying fish and stuff like that outside and I've got a basket I can dip them out with so we kind of move it slow with this right here what we got but I don't have one of them basket dippers in here to let the grease drain. All right. Let's go in with another batch. Now you see that grease has done got a little bit hot. It started cooking. Whoa, I dropped that one. Splattered a little bit on me there it did. But that grease is a little bit hotter so it's, it goes to cooking a little faster on this. In fact, we may need to turn it down just a little bit. No. Hope we got enough flour to do this last run. We're going to get them all up out of the milk. This milk is more especially the way we do fried deer meat. When we cut up deer steak, it just, for some reason, it works better when you do it in that milk. You dip it in it, the batter sticks to it a lot better. Uh, you can do it, yes, with water or whatever, and a lot of times meat moist anyway. Fish, I keep my fish dry because I'm using cornmeal, and why it works different, I don't, I can't explain that. But. So you may have not ever seen dipped in milk before it was flour. And this is just self-rising flour, if I didn't show that. And salt and pepper, and that's all the ingredients that we're really using, and just vegetable oil. Now if you'll notice something right here, how the sizzling has slowed down, that tells you that a lot of the moisture has done come out of what you're frying. So we're going to just kind of roll them over so that it browns the other side again. But most of this is pretty well browning. It's getting even cooking. Let it cook. Just a little bit more. 
You drink my sweet tea while I'm waiting on it. I'll show y'all what I'm really waiting on. <laughs> I didn't make that, no. All right, we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna be smart about this. I'm gonna get this over here. Load it up one more time because we're going to cook it all. We're not going to save nothing for later. And see, this don't take very long. We're pretty much in real time so far. I don't think it's going to be a real long video. I'm going to probably edit out just a little bit, but I'm going to let you pretty much just watch me cook. And we were just about right with the flour. We don't have but just a few little crumbs of stuff left in there, and they very little. So I'm not going to save that. I'm going to put that in the garbage and be done with it. Pretty well done. We're going to cut the stove off. Now you want to wipe this grease up while it's still warm. It comes off a whole lot easier. Because oh. I had done grip it pretty good. And I don't know where they come up with the myth that you can't use cast iron on these flat top stoves. We've been, that's the only thing we've cooked on, cooked with, just about it. So, it ain't been no issues for us. I think that's kind of a myth. All right, let's taste it, see what it's like. Batter tastes just like fried chicken for sure. Good to me. But it's hard to say that tastes like chicken. Because anytime you don't know exactly what something tastes like, you say it tastes like chicken. So is that how that got its name? <laughs> But it is good. 
chanterelles. They really good. That and Drew's lucky. Roscoe, come here. You wanted a bite? Come here. Here. Roscoe didn't approve. He's a little leery of that. He's eating it. Was it good? Roscoe, was it good? You want another one? Or no, no more. Stand up if you want another one. Stand up. No? Okay. Might not have been too good, ready? One more? Yeah. Stand up. Talk to me. Talk to me. <laughs> They'll talk. Here you go, Liz. All right. Thank y'all for watching our video. I hope it's what you expected. I just, whenever I picked these and told everybody how good they was, all I wanted to see you cook it. So this is the cooking the chicken of the woods mushroom video. Thank y'all for watching. We'll see y'all next time on Spirit of the Outdoors.